Hello, dear viewers. You are welcome to the GMAT 41 special edition of Past Questions and Answers. My name is Engineer Omaka Emmanuel, a chemical engineer by profession and an adroit tutor by occupation. In this special edition by the GMAT 41, I'll be dealing with past questions and answers strictly that of West Africa's Senior School Certificate Examination, WASA, otherwise known as WAC, JAM, otherwise referred to as UTME, and of course, the past questions of a school that I am an alumnus, now the Azikwe University, Oka, also known as UNISIC. If this is your first time of visiting the GMAT 41's YouTube channel, I passionately appeal to you, please, do kindly subscribe. And as much as possible, turn on the notification bell so that anytime I upload a new content, boom, you will be notified. For our dear returnee, if you have not subscribed, what is holding you back? Please, join the GMAT 41 in our quest to add sustainable values to students' education. And for those of you that have subscribed and have been following the GMAT 41, I am giving it to you, BUSA, BUSA, BUSA. Thank you very much. I am grateful and remain blessed. Be assured that we are not giving up. We are committed to giving you all the best. Let me say this before I go into launching this special edition. Remember, it is past questions and answers. And so, I will be dealing with it swiftly. No time to waste. Too. For full range of learning, you can kindly contact us. Here's the number is showing on the screen now. Or you can go then through and click on the WhatsApp link that you have there in order to contact us directly. As I launch this special edition, I am giving honor to Yodizik as we look at elementary mathematics past question of 2017. And our very first question, we have this on the board. Solve the equation 3 raised to the power x minus 2, close the bracket, plus 3 raised to the power x equal to 90. And we've got these options here on the board. Please take note that in this examination, calculator is not allowed. That is the rule. Now, how do we solve this problem? The question given to us is 3 to the power of x minus 2, close the bracket, plus 3 to the power of x equal to 90. Now, I'd like to state that this question is taken from a topic known as initial equation. Indicial equation is simply equation in indices, so it is still a further aspect of indices. Therefore, we need the knowledge of indices to solve this problem. How do we handle this? Now, we can distribute this base to these powers, because this power is obtained either from multiplication law of indices or from division law of indices. I can rewrite this as 3 raised to the power of x times 3 raised to the power of minus 2. Please take a look at the extract of these notes on initial equation. So, having seen that, we can now proceed and then add 3 raised to the power x equal to 90 from here, you know. 3 raised to the power minus 2, according to negative law of indices, is 1 over 9. That is 1 over 3 raised to the power 2. So, this is the same as 3 raised to the power x divided by 9 plus 3 raised to the power x equal to 90. Can we clear fractions and see? Of course, we have a fraction here. To clear this fraction in this equation, the fastest thing to do is to use the LCM of the denominator to multiply all the numerators. If you do that, this is going to give you 3 raised to the power x left. Because, of course, from here, if you use 9 to multiply 3 raised to the power x, and then this is over 9. This and this we cancel. Is that okay? So, you'll be left with 3 raised to the power x. Then, plus, use the 9, which is the LCM, to multiply 3 raised to the power x here. And that is equal to 9 times 90 giving us 810. 
At this point here, we have 3 raised to power x in this term. And here, we have 3 raised to power x in the second term. We don't know the power x. There is nothing we can do here other than assuming a value to represent this 3 raised to power x. So I would say, let p be equal to 3 raised to power x. And what does that mean? It implies that this will be called p plus this will become 9 times p equal to 810. You can add up this because this is an equation in p already. So I'm going to get 10p equal to 810. How do I get my p? Therefore, the value of p is equal to 810 divided by 10. And if you do that, you will get 81. But it is not p that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the value of x. Now, you have to recall that you called p to be equal to 3x. So I'm not saying it implies that. Okay, let me write but you know that p is equal to 3 raised to power x. So it means that 81, which is the value of p, will now be equal to 3 raised to power x. At this point, to get our x, we need to express both sides in the same base. This 81 can be written as 3 raised to power 4. And that will now be equal to 3 raised to power x. Now you have one term on the left and one term on the right of this equation. The same basis. So what do you do? We are going to cancel out the same basis there. This goes up. And therefore, the value of x is equal to what? 4. And what is the correct option here? The correct option is option B. Option B is the correct option. So you now have to go and shade it. Let us now look at question number 2. Given cot squared theta plus 3 cosec squared theta equal to 7. Compute tan theta. Now we've got the options there, of course. Given to us as usual. And so how do we solve this problem? I'd like to state that this question is taken from trigonometry. So we're giving cot squared theta plus 3 cosec squared theta equal to 7. And so we have to find the value of tan theta. This is a problem taken from what? Trigonometry. Is that okay? Now to solve this problem, what do we do? We are going to rewrite cot squared theta plus 3 open bracket. This cosec squared theta has a value from trigonometric identity under Pythagorean identity. This cosec squared theta is equal to 1 plus cot squared theta. That's the value. So I'm going to make it equal to 7. Please take a look at the note extracts from the GMAT 41 engineering mathematics class trigonometry. Watch. Now you've seen that under Pythagorean identity there are three of them, is that also? So out of them, one of the Pythagorean identity is that 1 plus cot squared theta is equal to what? Cosec squared theta. So in place of this cosec squared theta, that's why I fixed the identity. Make it equal to 7. Open up these brackets. So we have cot squared theta plus 3 times 1 will give us 3 plus 3 times this will give us 3 cot squared theta. And that will be equal to what? 7. We've got like terms here. This and this will add up to give us 4 cot squared theta. 3 will go over to this to give us 7 minus 3. So the right hand side will become 4. Y cot squared theta plus cot squared theta will give us 4 cot squared theta equal to 3 we cross over. Then we have 7 minus 3, which is equal to what? 4. At this point, you notice that on both sides of the equation, you have 4, which is common. So you can divide through by 4. It implies that we'll be left with cot squared theta equal to 1 because 4 divided by 4 will give us what? 1. What is the trig identity to cot? Cot is equal to 1 over tan. So cot theta is 1 over tan theta. Therefore, cot squared theta is equal to 1 over tan squared theta. And that will be equal to 1. So from here, if I make tan squared theta subject of the formula, it's going to be 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. Tan squared theta as subject of the formula will give us 1 divided by 1. Therefore, tan theta alone is equal to square root of 1. To remove the square from the tan theta, you take square root of both sides. Take note, please, this tan squared theta is the same as tan theta all squared. That's the interpretation of that. Is that okay? All right. Now, if you take square root of 1, what will you get? Tan theta will now be equal to... Remember that square root always goes with plus minus. Are you following right? 
So this will now become plus minus what? 1. Therefore, what is the correct option? You're going to write that option is... I put that there. This will be option D. Option D. So you have to go over and then shade option D. Let us look at the next question, number 3. Question 3 reads... Find a comma c such that x squared minus 7x plus 9 is equivalent to a, open bracket, x minus b, close the bracket, square plus c. Alright, now we've got the options as usual, so how do we solve this problem? x squared minus 7x plus 9 being equivalent to a bracket, x minus b, close the bracket, square plus c. Now this problem is actually obtained from an extracted knowledge of partial fraction. If you are solving the partial fraction using the general method, it's actually a knowledge of that that was used to ask this question. So what do I do? It's simple. I need to expand this right-hand side, and then I will compare both sides and equate their coefficients, as well as equate the constant term. Let's work it out and see. x squared minus 7x plus 9 will be equivalent to a, open bracket, I need to expand this first. So that's going to give me x squared minus 2bx plus b squared. And then uh, close the bracket plus c. Alright? And so we're going to get x squared minus 7x plus 9 equivalent to, if you open up this bracket with this a, you're going to get ax squared minus 2abx plus ab squared plus c. I am going to do some grouping now because at this point I need to compare the coefficient of x squared on the left and right, the coefficient of x on left and right, and of course the constant term on left and what right. So I will do some grouping here. Watch. This is the coefficient of x squared. If you come here, this minus 2ab is the coefficient of x. A is the coefficient of x squared. Minus 2ab is the coefficient of what? x. And this whole term, if you look at it, there is no x there. So we call this the word constant term. So let us compare coefficient now. Are you ready? I will start with that of x squared. Coefficient of x squared. On the left hand side, the coefficient is 1. And that 1 will be equal to coefficient of x squared on the right, which is a. Therefore, you see clearly that a is equal to what? 1. Uh -huh. With this knowledge, you can even start thinking, okay, that here A is 1, in option C, A is 1, in option D, A is 1. Definitely, the answer is between A, C, and D. So, B is not the option. Alright, but you have to get to the end. The next one is to get the value of C. But before we get this C, we need to know the value of B. Because B is inside the term where you can get C from. Are you following? So, how do we get the value of B? B is found as part of coefficient of x. So I would pick the coefficient of x, equate and solve. On the left hand side, the coefficient is minus 7. It's going to be equal to minus 2ab. Minus 2ab. And then we know the value of a. a is equal to 1. But with this, this negative signs, we cancel out below that. And once it cancels out, this will imply that 7 is equal to 2 bracket 1 times b. Therefore, the value of b is equal to 7 over what? 2 from here. Now that we've gotten the value of b, I can actually get the value of what? c. Are you following right? c is obtained from the constant term. So I will write constant terms. From the constant term, on the left hand side, the constant is what? 9. And on the right hand side, the constant is ab squared plus c. So 9 will be equal to ab squared plus c. And that implies that 9 will be equal to a is 1, b, the value of b is 7 over 2, and then I'm going to square a plus c. If you work out this, you get 9 is equal to 49 divided by 4. You know, 1 times anything will give you that term. But from here, you need to be done with the bracket having square first. 7 squared is 49, 2 squared is 4. And then times this one will still give you 49 over 4, and then plus c. Therefore, the value of c is equal to 9 minus 49 over 4. You collect like terms. Now, you have a whole number from which you are subtracting a fraction. The fastest way of working out the LCM here implies that c is equal to, you use the denominator to multiply the whole number. 4 times 9 would give you what? 36. Then minus this numerator, 36 minus 49 is going to give us minus 13. Minus 13, then all over 4. And that's the value of C. 
Therefore, from what we've done, A is equal to 1, comma, and C is equal to minus 13 over 4. So what would be the correct option? That's option C. All right, option C is correct. Option C. You go over to option C and shade it correctly. We are now moving on to question number 4. The first question reads, for what values of x are both inequalities 3x plus 11 greater than 0 and 8 minus 7x greater than 0 true? Alright, now the inequality is given to us 3x plus 11 greater than 0 and 8 minus 7x greater than 0. We are now being asked for what values of x will this inequality be true? Clearly you see that this problem is taken from what inequality? So we're going to solve each of them. This is linear inequalities, okay? So here we go. From here, we're going to have 3x. If this 11 crosses this inequality sign, it will change to minus, you know? So we have greater than 0 minus 11, which will give us minus 11. And then x will now be greater than minus 11 divided by what? 3. So that is this part. And then coming here, we are going to have 8 minus 7. x is greater than zero. So what we do from here, again, we are going to move this 8 to the other side, so we'll be left with minus 7x greater than 0 minus 8. 0 minus 8 will give us minus 8. Now to get the value of x, I need to divide through by its coefficient, which is minus 7. And if you divide an inequality, or you multiply an inequality with a negative sign, the sign of the inequality will change. So as I'm dividing through by minus 7, I will now get x is less than, you notice that the sign has changed. So 8 over 7, because the minus minus will divide through, or will cancel out. So we've gotten that x is greater than minus 11 over 3. For x to be greater than minus 11 over 3, what does it mean? Here, it means that, or it implies that, minus 11 over 3 is less than x. That's the interpretation of this. And x is less than 8 over 7. So we can put this together to form a range and then pick our answer. Therefore, therefore, from here, we now write minus 11 over 3 is less than x. And from here, x is less than 8 over 7. I can now go for the correct option. Minus 11 over 3 less than x. And then x is less than 8 over 7. Correct option is... Option B. Option B. And this takes us to question number five. 